as women, we are genetically uncomfortable around money. Oh, we have superficial conversations. How much something cost or what material stuff you bought. But the really uncomfortable areas like how much debt you have, how are you raising money, what assets you bought, or even how much you earn, how much you spend, these are shoved under our emotional carpets. We are more comfortable talking about our sex lives than money. Money has power over our lives because for most part, we have chosen to allow it to reign supreme, often by pretending that it's not important. And yet, money is often the deciding factor in all areas of our life, where we stay, with who we stay, and for how long we stay, what we eat, how we exercise, where we work. And which is why this episode talks exclusively about women and their conditioning around money and the lies they keep telling themselves. Hi, I'm Sheila and this is Lumia 24. Light on! Talking about our attitudes, our conditioning and our beliefs around money is one of the most important conversations we can have. Precisely because money itself is unimportant. Money as we know it is simply paper or with cryptocurrency, not even that. It doesn't mean anything about who we are. However, money is a tool. We can use it to create the life we want or deny ourselves that life. And that's where it becomes important. Today, I'm sharing three of the money lies that I hear most often in my work as a coach and I will help you understand and overcome them. Hopefully, this could help you release some of the hold that money has over you because you realize that the only reason money seems to exert power is because you choose to let it. This idea that we women are somehow inherently bad at managing money has been around for far too long and we've kind of bought into it. Here's why it's time to call bullshit. Now, of course, this is a story that I was playing out for the longest time in my life. Ever since I got my first credit card, to be precise, I would whip it out in a heartbeat and my shopaholic tendencies had me going overboard. And that had earned me a reputation with my friends, family, and most importantly, myself as being bad with money. When I started on this money journey and I started looking at my numbers, I realized something. I'm not that much of an erratic mess when it comes to my finances, or at least not as much of a mess as I always believed myself to be. I realized that I have investments, I have savings, and I have my money working for me. And there's a good chance you might not be either. Almost until 1974, banks required that women find a dude to co-sign bank loans, regardless, and here's where it gets really interesting, regardless of whether she's single, divorced or widowed, regardless of whether she single-handedly ran her business. And this is where this really meaningless story comes from. Over the course of their lives, girls receive significantly less financial education and resources compared to boys. And it's a lack that compounds over time and manifests in a negative perception of their own financial behaviors. A nasty hybrid of the confidence gap and the financial literacy gap. Add in a dash of unsubstantiated gender bias, such as women being shopaholics, and you have the perfect recipe for these illusions that we have over our own personal finance habits. Stephanie O'Connell, she's a millennial money expert and author of The Broken Beautiful Life. She says it beautifully. It's not that we are not capable of making strong financial plans. It's that our lack of confidence keeps us from engaging in our financial lives altogether which, when it comes to money, career, and our respective financial futures, holds us back from affording and enjoying all the things that we really want. I just want you to take a moment here. Put your hand on your heart and tell yourself, you're doing great, my love. We are now earning more than our mothers and grandmothers. More than half of the wealth in the world is being generated by women. Whatever your personal story, keep this perspective in mind. You are only limited by these lies that are strongly entrenched in our minds. And it's high time we let go of our excuses for not learning enough about money. Just like a baby learning to walk, we have to stumble, fall, get up and learn to navigate money. And it's just these small actions that will have us flying with money. So here's a small action that we can start today. Every day, create a reminder 
open your bank accounts and look at your balance. And as you look at your account, give gratitude for the money you have. So often we are so focused on our debts and lack, how much we owe, how much we don't have. Remember, what you focus on grows. So we don't want our debt to grow, right? So focus on how much you have. Honestly, every time I do this, I find a significant growth in my income. But sometimes when fear sneaks in, I forget. So make a commitment. Do this exercise every day for the next 21 days and see what changes. I've had clients who've never operated a bank account, who have never ever made an independent purchase or paid their own bills. This is an extension of the earlier point. We have our fathers to take care of it and then we are packed off and sent off to our married houses where our Prince Charming is supposed to take care of all this. We have never questioned this. We willingly hand over our power. This is somehow symptomatic of our feelings of self-worth, our feeling of not being good enough. Consider this. A survey has shown that as much as 65% women, 65% women say that a healthy bank balance is their top priority when looking for a husband. Not values, not intelligence or a sense of humor or even looks. Healthy bank balance. Imagine. Now there's nothing wrong with hoping for a rich husband. The problem comes when we put our faith, consciously or subconsciously, we put our faith in the idea that our money problems will be sorted by this external force because the odds are it won't. Just for a moment, I want you to stop and think. This was okay in those times when women were housebound and men were in charge of doing everything outside. But today, times have changed. No longer can you say, hey PC or hey future husband, will you just take care of this? Even if you are a homemaker, you can no longer hope that someone will swoop in and save you. Because maybe, maybe your Prince Charming will turn up, but he may not be what you had in mind. He could be poor himself, or he could be a high earner but useless with money, or he could be a temporary PC. He could leave you or you could leave him. And what about if he never turns up? More and more women are single nowadays, sometimes by default, sometimes by choice. Even if you do find the ideal Prince Charming, you have to ask yourself if you really, really want to be dependent on someone else for money, forever. Then you're married for a fortnight or a month, asking your husband for money to buy a nail polish or go to the spa seems romantic. It seems easy, but I doubt you will really want to be doing it after 10 years of marriage. Ask women who've been in this position, Maybe you are in that state now. What it means is that you need to have an eye on your financial independence, have your own earnings and your own source of income. You have to learn to handle it, grow it. If you want to survive in any style in your old age, you have to come up with the money yourself. Learn about money, educate yourself, ask questions. I am not smart enough or good looking enough or knowledgeable enough or not from the right background. You take your pick. There is generally a lot of pressure to stack up in our culture. We feel as if there is something wrong with us if, for example, we are still single by a certain age. We don't make a certain amount of income or we don't have a large social circle or don't look and act a certain way in the presence of others. The list could truly go on forever. This is one of the biggest things that I work on with clients during a one-on-one -on -one coaching. The fear that you're not good enough. The fear that you're not good enough is a fear that routinely affects everyone, though it shows up differently for each person. For some of you, not good enough expresses itself as going into a workaholic overachiever mode. For some, it shows up as comparisons. For others, it shows up as procrastination and avoidance and not finishing what they start. So, let's unpack this feeling of not good enough thing. So, let's unpack this feeling not good enough thing a bit. When would you say you are good enough? When you make enough money? When you are at that perfect weight? When you will never yell at your children or lose your patience? When you never procrastinate? Or when you eat right? I am sure you see the point I am getting at. That this enough idea has really loose boundaries. Spend less time searching for enoughness because we have trained ourselves to only focus on what's not working, what's broken. 
I was speaking to a young client of mine who had been given this exercise in shoring up self esteem. He had been asked to send me five things that he appreciated about himself every day. He says that after doing this exercise for over a month, he started finding teeny tiny things about himself that he realized he needed to acknowledge. Whether it is that he smiles easily or eats without fussing too much or that he keeps his room in order and he's only 21, mind you. If he can do it, so can I and so can you. So sister, next time you're tempted to go into not enough or any messages that are close cousins, here's one simple mantra. And the lesser you value yourself, the lesser you will be valued. Say thank you for sharing and immediately look for something to appreciate. Give yourself a pat on the shoulder for watching this video, for finding time to learn, for being willing to take control of your money and your life. The glass ceiling has been broken, my love. We just need to rise up. And with this, I sign off. It's been intense. It has been a lot for you to take in. Just internalize and take action. Find a mentor, a coach, a program, a book and start. And yes, share this video with the women in your life. Remember, when women get together, massive changes can happen. Spread the light, sister.